My name is Dr. Marie O'Toole, RN, and it is my privilege to serve as the Senior Associate Dean and Chief Nursing Officer for this great school of nursing, and to welcome you to the seventh annual commencement ceremony of the Rutgers School of Nursing Camden. Congratulations to our class of 2018 graduates and to your families and significant others. This is a joyful moment for you and a day of celebration for the nursing community. Please take this opportunity to join me in a round of applause for our musicians, the Rutgers Brass Ensemble. I now ask you to remain standing as Caitlin Matheny, a senior in our traditional nursing program, sings our national anthem. <clears throat> oh, say, can you see? By the dawn's early light, what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave? <laughs> Thank you, Caitlin, for that magnificent gift to our graduates and to all who are here to celebrate with them. Please be seated. It is now my pleasure to recognize distinguished members of the Rutgers Camden community who are with us today. Seated on stage are Chancellor Phoebe Haddon, Nursing Associate Deans, Dr. Claudia Beckman and Dr. Beth Scannell, Brigadier General Linda J. Sturley, our commencement speaker, my Dean colleagues, Dr. Chris Lindemeyer, Dean of the Rutgers Camden Faculty of Arts and Sciences, Dr. Jai Ganesh, Dean of the Rutgers School of Business Camden, and Michael Cahill, Co-Dean of the Rutgers Law School. Also here are members of the governing boards of Rutgers University, George Rears and Dorothy Stenitis. <laughs> members of the Rutgers Camden Chancellor's executive team are Provost Mike Pallas, Vice Chancellor Mary Beth Daisy, Senior Vice Chancellor Larry Gaines, Vice Chancellor Dr. Jason Rivera, Associate Chancellor Dr. Naima Watson, and Vice Chancellor Dr. Craig Westman. Last, but certainly not least, the faculty and staff of Rutgers School of Nursing Camden. Everyone here on stage joins me in congratulating our graduates and their families on their academic achievements that we celebrate today. Please, all, everyone on stage, stand to be recognized.
This is a day of enormous pride for all of us at Rutgers Camden, and especially for the School of Nursing Camden, as we confer graduate and undergraduate degrees on 261 candidates who comprise our seventh graduating class. Today, we are granting 10 graduate degrees and 251 baccalaureate degrees. Today's graduates are the first graduating class to learn in our state-of-the-art nursing and science building. Graduates, we are very happy that all of your guests are here to celebrate this historic event with us. Let's take a moment to give them a round of applause for their huge contribution to your success in the rigorous academic and professional journey that you have completed. The School of Nursing Camden was created by the Rutgers University Board of Governors on June 14, 2011. However, we have a rich history rooted in the Department of Nursing created in 1974. Throughout its history, Rutgers Nursing has responded to the needs of the community with service being integral to its mission as a public university. The commitment of Rutgers Camden students, faculty, and staff to its host city is a point of pride that makes a difference in the lives of the citizens of Camden who are your partners in education. We know that you will continue to represent Rutgers with distinction in hospitals, outpatient units, the community, and anywhere there is an individual family or community who needs health promotion or health care. Today, when you walk across the stage, you will receive a pin that will identify you as a Rutgers Camden nurse. The wearing of a pin is associated with your school of nursing and is a tradition that began with Florence Nightingale. Miss Nightingale received a medal from Queen Victoria in 1855 in recognition of her service in the Crimean War. Legend has it that she, in turn, bestowed this pin on one of her students. In 1880, a school in the United States that was based on Florence Nightingale's model of education began to bestow pins to all its graduates, and the tradition continues to this day. The traditions associated with pinning of a new graduate varies from school to school. We owe a debt of gratitude to the student committee who wanted to ensure that the Rutgers School of Nursing Camden tradition included each and every individual who has supported them during their nursing education. That committee wisely chose to incorporate pinning into the academic ceremony. Our alumni will present the pins to graduates as they pro process across the stage, and then significant others, faculty, will and guests will have the opportunity to return to our beautiful new nursing and science building to actually place the pins on our graduates. As you know, the knowledge, skills, and attitude associated with the best traditions in nursing are associated with the Rutgers Camden graduates. We are so proud of you and the difference you will make during your careers. We are grateful that many of our faculty stay connected to our graduates so that our students eventually become our colleagues and that process starts as of today. We are here to celebrate the achievements of our students who in a few minutes will be our graduates. Among them are 10 new nurse practitioners, 196 new nurses, and 55 registered nurses who return to school to earn a baccalaureate degree. They are an impressive group. In the commencement program book, you will note that 40% of our baccalaureate graduates earn GPAs that merit the distinction of graduating with Latin honors. We expect great things of you and know that you will live up to those expectations. When I talk to leaders in healthcare and clinical agencies about who they want to hire, they tell me to send our Rutgers graduates to them because you have the analytical skills, the mental agility, and resilience to deal with the complexities of nursing practice and to become leaders in our fast-paced, dynamic healthcare environment. They do not want leaders who maintain the status quo. The expectation for you as leaders is to be champions of change. 
Our colleagues want nurse leaders who will guide health care from a focus on illness and individuals to a focus instead on sustained health for communities, populations, and societies. You disrupt the stereotypes that have interfered with nurses practicing at the highest level possible. They want you, a Rutgers Camden graduate. Remember who you are, where you're from, what you know, and the power that you hold in your head, in your hands, and in your hearts. And then I want you to find your voice, as I know you will, and speak for all of the people who depend on you and the profession. And so, graduates, today, you join the large and distinguished ranks of Rutgers Camden nurses. You are well prepared for the challenges and opportunities of a professional nursing career. You have all worked very hard and have made sacrifices to earn the, degree, the degrees that you are about to receive. As one of your deans, it's my privilege to be among the first to formally, formally congratulate you. And I ask everyone to join me in applauding again for the Rutgers School of Nursing Camden class of 2018. Yay! <laughs> Louder, come on! <laughs> That's more like the leaders I know. <laughs> It's now my pleasure to invite Dean Elizabeth Skinnell Dash to the podium to introduce our commencement speaker. Thank you, Dr. O'Toole. The Honorable Linda J. Sturley is a retired nurse leader with almost 50 years of diverse management experience in healthcare operations in a variety of settings and roles. From 2000 until 2009, she served as the Chief Executive Officer of the American Nurses Association and its three subsidiaries, the American Nurses Foundation, the American Academy of Nursing, and the American Credentialing Center. The American Nurses Association remains the largest and oldest national nursing organization and represents the country's almost four million registered nurses today. As CEO of ANA, Sterling developed and implemented programs designed to meet the vision and goals of the association. She led and managed the national headquarters, its operations and staff. She represented ANA within and outside the nursing community, both nationally and internationally. With approximately 200 staff members, and a $44.4 million annual budget, ANA was one of the largest professional associations in the Washington metropolitan area. Linda Sturley retired as a Brigadier General in the United States Air Force, where she served as the 12th Chief of the Air Force Nurse Corps. She began her military career in 1970 as a critical care staff nurse in intensive care. During her career in the Air Force, she held various clinical and management positions, including Chief Nursing Officer at Wilford Hall Medical Center, Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas the Air Force's largest medical center at the time with 1,000 operating beds, and also as chief nurse at the 48th Tactical Fighter Wing Hospital, Royal Air Force in Lakenheath, United Kingdom. From 1995 until her retirement from the military in February 2000, General Sturley was assigned at Bowling Air Force Base, Washington, D.C., as Director, Medical Readiness, and Chief of the Air Force Nurse Corps. In these key roles, she shared responsibilities for the development of health care policy in support of 46,000 medical personnel 
80 medical treatment facilities and oversight of a $4.5 billion annual budget. She developed policies affecting the active and reserve components and was responsible for training, organizing, and equipping all Air Force medics for their wartime mission. General Sterling's most significant military awards and decorations include the Air Force Distinguished Service Medal, the Legion of Merit with Oak Leaf Cluster, the Meritorious Service Medal with three Oak Leaf Clusters, the Air Force Commendation Medal, the Air Force Achievement Medal, and the National Defense Service Medal with STAR. In 2002, President Bush appointed Linda Sturley to a five-year term on the Board of Regents of the Uniformed Services University of Health Sciences in Bethesda, Maryland, where she served as the Vice Chair of the Board. In addition to her membership in ANA and the Maryland Nurses Association, she is also a member of Tau Theta Chapter of Sigma Theta Tau International, the Society of Air Force Nurses, and the Military Officers Association of America. Linda Sturley earned a Master of Science degree in nursing from the University of California, San Francisco in 1985 and was a distinguished graduate. She earned a Bachelor of Science in nursing from Incarnate Word College in San Antonio, Texas in 1978 and graduated magna cum laude. She was awarded a diploma in nursing from Spartanburg General Hospital in Spartanburg, South Carolina in 1969 and was voted by her classmates as most likely to succeed. On a personal note, I had the privilege of serving with General Sturley in Washington, D.C. when she was at the Surgeon General's office and I was serving at the Pentagon. Please help me provide a warm welcome to General Linda Sturley. Good morning. Thank you so very much for that very kind and gracious introduction. One of the best things about my military career was the opportunity to work with some of the best and brightest this country has to offer, like my esteemed colleague and friend, retired Colonel Beth Scannell, now known to you as Dr. Beth Scannell Desch. It is truly an honor to address you, the 2018 graduating class of Rutgers University Camden School of Nursing. Your commencement is a celebration of your successful culmination of years of sacrifice, hard work, and perseverance. You did it despite the odds. You are now positioned for continued success as you start a new chapter in your lives as registered nurses or as advanced practice nurses. We would be remiss though if we did not recognize and thank your family, your friends, and the faculty who helped make this day possible. I am frequently asked, as I'm sure many of you will be asked in the future, to what do you attribute your success in your professional career? And my answer is truly quite simple and consistent, setting goals. It started with a single goal at the age of eight, which I achieved 13 years later. This was followed by a second goal in 1972, which then took 23 more years to achieve. Those two long-term goals guided and shaped my life for almost half a century. Now you may be wondering what my initial goal was. I decided I was going to be a nurse. I wish I could say it was because I wanted to make a difference in the lives of others and to help them achieve their optimum level of wellness. But unfortunately, at that moment, I was not altru altruistic. It was because I wanted to be able to give Dr. Clark, my pediatrician, 
shots. When he grew up, when I grew up, like the ones that he ordered the nurses to give me. I can still recall him saying to me as I stood in the doorway of his office with my hands on my hips and crying from the shot I had just received, I hope you do grow up one day, Linda, to be a nurse. Now I had no idea at that time of what it would take to be a nurse or how I was going to make that happen. In reality, the odds were really not in my favor. No one on either side of my family had ever attended college. In fact, most had never finished high school. My maternal grandfather could not read and could not write. My maternal grandmother eloped at the age of 16. My mother did finish high school, but no one pursued any form of higher education. My father did not finish high school either because he and his brothers had to work in a cotton mill to help support their family when their father died. He joined the U.S. Army Air Corps during World War II, making the U.S. Air Force a career, and he did eventually achieve his GED certificate. But because I was steadfast in pursuit of this long, of this early long-term nursing goal, I did take college prep courses in high school, and I did study for the SAT examinations in hopes of being accepted into a school of nursing. And in 1966, I was accepted into the last class of a diploma nursing program. In October 1969, I achieved the goal that I had first set for myself in 1956. I became a registered nurse. For the rest of my life, nursing has been one of my two overarching passions. My other lifelong passion was, and still is, service to my country, the United States of America. I am both a proud patriot and a proud nurse. My mother had a picture of me at age five in a little uniform that she had made for me from my dad's old uniforms. And on the back of the picture, she had written, Our Little General. I can recall wearing that uniform and marching from room to room in our apartment um, in post-World War II, war-torn Germany, and step to John Philip Sousa's The Stars and Stripes Forever. It is my sincere hope that you, the graduating class of 2018, feel that nursing is your passion. Because if so, nursing will be more than a job. It will be a very rewarding and satisfying career. It will be something that will inspire you to, make, to wake up each day looking forward to making a difference in the lives of others. And the vast majority of the time, it will not feel like work. Nursing will enrich your life and provide you with innumerable opportunities to impact not only individuals, but society itself. Initially, I practiced in the hospital where I trained, but I quickly saw that upward mobility would be a long time in coming because there was very little turnover among the nursing staff, except for retirements. I recall that I had enjoyed my years as a military family member, and my class had been visited by military recruiters while I was in nursing school. So I convinced one of my classmates to join the United States Air Force with me under the buddy system. Our initial commitment was for two years. During that time, something remarkable happened. Anna Mae Hayes, a colonel, and the U.S. Army Nurse Corps became the first woman in the history of this country to be promoted to the rank of Brigadier General. In 1972, the Air Force Nurse Corps promoted the current Corps Chief to Brigadier General. I liked what I saw and what I experienced in military health care. I was a valued and equal member of a team. I decided to make the military a career with a new goal of one day being the Chief of the Corps. 23 years later, on May 25, 1995, I met that goal when I became the 12th Chief of the United States Air Force Nurse Corps. But did I actually think that would happen one day, that I would be the Corps Chief when I set that goal 23 years earlier? The answer to that question is, not really. But what I did believe, and still believe to this day, is that it never would have happened had I not, to quote an Air Force slogan, aimed high and set that as a new goal. Even if it did not happen, 
I believed that I would be more successful and achieve more than if I had just let life happen to me and did not try to define my own preferred future. This second long-term goal shaped the following 28 years of my military career. So I encourage each one of you, as you commence your respective professional careers as a registered nurse, or as you embark on a new career trajectory as an advanced practice nurse, to look down the road as far as you can see and to set bold professional goals for yourselves. Whatever that goal might be, set it now and start taking those incremental steps to achieve that ultimate professional success. And if you have not already started your professional portfolio, please create it now. Document all the classes and courses that you will attend, the articles you write, the speeches you give, the classes you teach, the community and organizational activities that you support, your membership in professional organizations, the offices or positions that you hold. Develop a professional chronology, chronology starting today with your graduation and keep it updated on an ongoing basis. You will find it to be an invaluable resource on many occasions during your career. One important thing for you to remember is that it is imperative that you understand the system that you are working within. You must also recognize what you must accomplish to gain the knowledge, skills, and abilities necessary to add credibility to your resume or your curriculum vitae over the years. This pursuit of excellence will make your ultimate goal not just a dream, but a reachable reality. Having concrete goals is crucial because they do provide focus and direction, but they are not enough. Just setting a goal does not mean that it will happen. It will require commitment on your part, and your journey will not be a straight, linear path. There will be twists, there will be turns, and there will be bumps along the way. But it is your determination that will be the very thing that will lead you to success. A poem written by John Greenleaf Whittier entitled Don't Quit has been a guiding force throughout my life. It is inspirational and it speaks to the importance of determination and persistence in life. If you've never heard of it, I encourage you to do an internet search for it. These verses will help you through the valleys in your life. And I can assure you that while there will be peaks like today's graduation, there will also be valleys because that is the ebb and flow of life. Early in my career, I learned about a self-development and self-improvement strategy referred to as the whole person concept. Now this concept is not unique to the military. It has been attributed to an American philosopher and educator, Mortimer Jerome Adler, and written about by many authors. Personally, I have found the actualization of this concept in both my personal and professional life to have contributed to my successes, and most importantly, to more meaningful relationships in my life. It is about viewing yourself and others as a whole and understanding that the whole comprises the body, the mind, the spirit, and the heart. It is about balance and understanding that balance is on a continuum and it will vary for each one of you. And that balance will also change as each one of your lives unfolds. How I defined the whole person concept while in the military was based on the job performance factors upon which I was evaluated. There were six, job knowledge, leadership, professional qualities, organizational skills, judgment and decisions, and communication. This framework provided me with the opportunity to more clearly understand what was expected of me, as well as what I expected of my peers and my supervisors and subordinates as my career progressed. We all have expectations of each other, and most often we assume that others know what we expect of them. And they assume that we know what they expect from us. 
but that is usually not so. One of the tragedies in life, after the fact, is to learn that we did not meet expectations, not because we couldn't have, not because we wouldn't have, but simply because we never understood that it was an expectation. As a regional chief nurse executive, I was asked to address a graduating nurse intern class at one of the Air Force's medical centers. That same day, the major's promotion list, a worldwide promotion list, was released. The chief nurse of the medical center had asked me to review the personnel records with those non-selects and help them understand why they had not been selected for promotion. Their non-selection meant they would be involuntarily separated from the military. I clearly recall one particular young captain who said to me that I did not need to go over her military record with her because she knew now why she had not been selected for promotion. She explained to me that she had attended the nurse intern graduation earlier that day where I had addressed the whole person concept and what would be expected of them if they wanted to pursue a successful military career. She said to me, if I had known that, that at the beginning of my career, we would not be meeting today or having this conversation. I cannot emphasize enough to each and every one of you how important expectations are to success in life. I wish I could tell you that your supervisors will always clearly set expectations with you. But my past experiences have, has taught me that all too often, that will not be your reality. So I strongly encourage you to be proactive and make an appointment with your supervisor if such a meeting does not occur within the first month of your employment or any time that you have a supervisory change. Share with your supervisor what you understand or believe they expect of you and then ask them to validate that for you. Ask them if there is anything else that you did not address that would be expected. Finally, share with them what you will need from them in order to meet their expectations of you. Expectations are like a two-way street. We all have them of each other. And they must be articulated, not assumed, in order to try and ensure that they are met. While in the military, I had a career broadening assignment as a management consultant doing organizational development work for base and wing commanders. Think of them like small city mayors. What I learned was that it did not matter what career field I was working with, avionics, law enforcement, logistics, personnel, mechanics, or medicine. The issues were the same. Everyone from an airman basic with no stripes to a four-star general needs feedback and wants to know what is expected of them and how they measure up to those expectations. No one wants to be surprised at the end of an evaluation period. The same is true in nursing, healthcare, and every other discipline. Nursing is a profession that will last you a lifetime and there are many directions that you can go over the course of your career. As I was reviewing the nursing literature in preparation for my remarks today, I ran across an article that addressed 100 things one could do with a nursing degree. <clears throat> but as a member of the healthcare professions, we are in a career field where the half-life of job knowledge is one of the shortest. This means that we must be lifelong learners. The purpose of learning is growth, and our minds continue to develop as long as we live. As I said very early on in my remarks, your success in life will mostly be determined by you, yourself. This means that you must be proactive and not wait for life to happen to you. Instead, you need to take the initiative to try and control your destiny and chart your preferred future. And please remember this, do not give up when the going gets tough. How very fortunate we are to be members of the most trusted profession in America. After nursing was first added to the annual CNN USA Today Gallup poll over 20 years ago, America has rated nurses as the most trusted professionals. 
The only year when nursing was not number one was 2001, when firefighters had that distinction based on their heroic efforts during the September 11th terror attacks. But we were ranked number two. Nurses are revered and remembered by the differences that we make in people's lives, especially at special moments. Even though I've been retired for almost a decade now, I still put in about 40 hours a week of unpaid volunteer work with the American Nurses Association, the Maryland Nurses Association, the Online Journal of Issues in Nursing, and the Society of Air Force Nurses. I do this because I'm still passionate about my chosen profession, and I still want to make a difference wherever I can. As a student, I belong to the National Student Nurses Association, and I have belonged to a variety of specialty nursing organizations through the years, and to the American Nurses Association for almost half a century. Why? Because I believe that when nursing is strong, not only does our profession reap the benefits, but so does our nation and ultimately all mankind. But most importantly, the people that I love, the people that I care about in my life benefit from a strong nursing profession. I believe that nursing is the glue that holds the health system together and nurses are the true generalists within the system. But unfortunately, we have not yet achieved our full potential as a profession, given that our power base is almost four million nurses across America. But when nursing does fully self-actualize as a profession, and being the eternal optimist that I am, I do believe we will, then collectively, we will be better positioned to advocate for our profession and for the public that we serve. So in closing, let me congratulate each of you on successfully completing your degree requirements. Like me, whether you will soon be a new registered nurse or now a new advanced practice nurse, you have already achieved a major career goal by receiving the degree that will be conferred upon you today. I and the rest of the nation are counting on you. The newest generation of registered nurses and advanced practice nurses to continue to make a difference in the years to come. And I implore you, please do not stop here. Aim for the stars, because there is virtually no limit to how you will be able to make more of a difference. Timing has never been better, because almost anything is possible in today's world. For example, I am proud to share with you that on June 1st, 2018, another ceiling for the nursing profession will be broken when the first nurse in the history of the United States Air Force, three-star Dorothy, General Dorothy Hogg, will become the 23rd U.S. Air Force Surgeon General. She spent most of her career as a woman's health nurse practitioner. She is married with two children and has five grandchildren. And I can truthfully say that never in my lifetime did I think I would live to see that happen. So I hope some of the examples that I've shared with you today have resonated and will positively influence you and the extent to which you individually make a difference in this world. You either already are or you soon will be a member of one of the oldest and most noble professions, nursing. And please never forget that as a nurse, you exemplify the care, the compassion, and the trust that is associated with the profession of nursing, both here and around the globe. You have my most sincere best wishes for continued success in the years to come. Thank you. General Sterling, thank you for your words of wisdom and inspiration and for your work in advancing health care and the education of health care providers around the world. We have a small token of our appreciation to give you.
Rutgers School of Nursing Camden, for Brigadier General Linda J. Sterley, keynote speaker, commencement 2018. Thank you very much. This is another first. Thank you. Again, thank you very much. Thank you. It is now my pleasure to introduce our first student speaker, Adam O'Brien, a graduate of the RN to BS program. Adam? Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> <clears throat> Chancellor Haddon, General Sterley, distinguished faculty, staff, family, friends, and most importantly, the 2018 graduating class of the Rutgers State University of New Jersey Camden Campus School of Nursing, good morning and welcome. I would like to share with you a mantra that has helped me through my time here at Rutgers Camden. Hold on to hope. I'm not talking about the kind of hope that is like a flash in the pan, all right? but the kind of hope that gives you that slow, simmering desire to conquer every day and to make a difference. Hope has gotten me through countless endeavors along my lifelong journey. It is that hope that has allowed us all to stop at nothing, to sit amongst one another today and to share our achievements together. Bruce Springsteen once said, all people have is hope. That's what brings the next day in whatever that day may bring. A hope grounded in the real world of living, friendship, work, family. It is a poignant message. Remember that hope is not only important in the tumultuous times, but also in the glorious moments as well. Living, friendship, work, and family all have universal yet specific meanings to each and every one of us. And as different as we may be, hope is the common thread that unites us as one. Living, being immersed in Camden, New Jersey, we are reminded daily of the challenges that face our community. It is our responsibility and professional duty to, <coughs> excuse me, to deliver hope to those in need. This program is a beacon for future generations here in Southern New Jersey. By shedding light through contributions from its faculty, researchers, and you, the graduates, Rutgers Camden School of Nursing will provide change to the community and help us as professionals provide hope to those so desperately in need. Friendship, I encourage you to remember the friendship and bonds that you have forged here. To date, some of my closest friends are the ones that were developed while in nursing school. You've loved, you've cried, laughed, and persevered together. Take the time to cherish one another and continue to support each other in your hopes and aspirations as you move forward into the world. And remember to live your life on purpose. Work. Nurses are often the first line of hope in this world. As such, it is our duty to be present and to also be in the present for our patients, their families, and for ourselves. <clears throat> we are there to care, to heal, to treat, and to bring hope to reality. And lastly, family. Family is our greatest source of hope and strength. Family is the cornerstone of growth and love, whether it be biological family or family we choose to call our own. With family, our hopes are better able to be realized. I'd like to take time today to thank all of our families for their support. I know we would not be here today without all of your selfless support, your commitment to our education, the late night coffee runs, and tolerance as we have focused our attention towards the service of others. 
You have allowed us to make a difference and let us vow to you to continue to honor our profession by bringing hope to all those we encounter. Are you class of 2018? Hold on to hope, good luck, and Godspeed. Now I would like to introduce Seda Dunlap, a graduate of our Accelerated Baccalaureate program. Seda. Thank you. Yay. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, just looking at you guys, I, I'm getting choked up because we're going to be new nurses. All right, let me get to my speech. I'm sorry. <laughs> Good morning, faculty, families, and the graduating class of 2016. Just 15 months ago, I started here as an accelerated BSN student, and I think I can speak for all of us in saying that these past 15 months have been absolutely insane and exhausting. As Dr. Avalon, wherever she is, she always said, we have this much material and this much time to do it. <laughs> and that's exactly what this program is. As an ABSN student, this is our second time around, which can be really scary. We already started adulting. Most of us have families of our own or we're just starting a family, which means we needed to still work just to survive. We completely turned our lives upside down to change our careers. In our cohort, we had pharmacy techs, EMTs, dance teachers, social workers, military personnel, you name it, you, we probably have it. We are able to bring our diverse skills set and perspective to apply it to the nursing world. Now to get here today, there has been a lot of tears, a lot of wine, a lot of panic attacks, but most importantly, a lot of support. We've received support from our friends and family. Even if we didn't talk to you for a week or maybe an entire semester because we had an exam every week, We've received support from our professors and each other. No one knows what it's like to go through the Rutgers Accelerated Program except us and those who came before us. We've made lifelong friends and extended our support systems. Today we move on from nursing students to nursing graduates. We are able to add three letters to the end of our names, BSN. Remember our faces here today because this will not be the last time you see us. We are the future of the nursing profession. I can say with confidence that this is not our last stop. I'd like to thank you on behalf of our ABSN cohort, to all the faculty for getting us here today, to our families for the unwavering support, and to my cohort. Without each other, I don't think we'd be here. To the entire class of 2018, this is usually the point where I'd say a nice cheesy quote, uh, the hassle is worth the tassel, or dream big and dare to fail, but I really want you guys to indulge me for a moment. Our education will only make us safe nurses, and only that. What's going to set us apart is our compassion, empathy, and care. And these characteristics we can't be taught. These will make us exceptional nurses. With that being said, the best advice that I can give you guys today is to take a nap, sleep in tomorrow, because by this time next week, we'll be elbow deep in NCLEX prep questions. <laughs> Congratulations, class of 2018. Thank you, Seda. Thank you, Seda. And last but not least, it is my pleasure to introduce Stephanie Gerace, a graduate of our Doctor of Nursing Practice Program. Stephanie. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Good morning, fellow graduates, guests, esteemed Rutgers Camden School of Nursing faculty, and congratulations to the Rutgers Camden School of Nursing Class of 2018. We did it! <laughs> Now I am sure I can say on behalf of my fellow graduates, wow, what a process that has been. Whether you were in school for just a little over a year or at least four, it was a process that we had to trust. This process may have tested us and our loved ones for that matter, 
We may have felt every emotion under the sun while experiencing this process, but boy, did we respect the process. Because we knew there was a light at the end of this tunnel, and it was being a nurse. Being a nurse, as many of you already know, or will soon know, is not just a career choice, it is a way of life. And as I stand up here with a terminal degree in nursing, I urge all of you to never settle in nursing. One of the greatest things about being a nurse is our ability to develop a one-of-a-kind connection with others. There are so many ways that we as nurses are able to affect change and impact the lives of others, which is why almost every year, nurses are labeled as the most trusted profession in our country. On the other hand, nursing can be a very emotionally trying career, especially on days when you feel as though you have given every ounce of who you are in order to provide the best possible care to your patients. There will also be days where you find yourself getting lost in the day-to-day -day routine, simply completing one task after the other without feeling as though you were able to apply that special nursing touch. I stress to you all as you go out there with your new degrees to not settle for a task-oriented nursing career, though it can be tough. There may be financial, personal, and relationship constraints at play that ultimately reinforce the comfort of career stagnation. However, if you ever feel as though you have lost that special nursing touch, I encourage you to stop and reflect. Have you found yourself settling in your current nursing position? Do you feel as though there is more that you could be doing for your patients? Would your nursing skills be better suited by providing care in a different way? It was my answers to those questions that brought me to this point right here, standing before you. It is now, more than ever, that the next generation of nurses must keep moving, keep striving, and above all, keep their compassion. Just because I have earned a doctorate degree in nursing does not mean that I will never further excel my career as a doctor of nursing practice. For as long as you never lose that nursing touch, I can promise that you will always end up loving what you do. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie, and thank you to all three of our excellent <laughs> student speakers. I would like to now invite our Chancellor, Chancellor Haddon, to the podium to begin with the granting of degrees. <laughs> Chancellor Haddon. <laughs> Greetings, class of 2018. Uh, first, I want to thank Dr. Scannell Desch, as well as our speaker, and uh, the students who have preceded me, and I would ask you to give them another round of applause. It is my honor to deliver heartfelt congratulations and best wishes from all of our faculty, our staff, and our alumni to you this morning. It's been an amazing year. As we celebrated the opening of the State of the Art Nursing and Science Building in September, we reflected on what it means to be Rutgers and Camden. And I must say, I believe that it starts at the roots. R Rutgers is rooted in a vision of access and inclusion that reaches back to 1766 when Queen's College was founded in honor of Britain's Queen Charlotte, who, against the conventions of her time, insisted that her daughter receive the same education as her sons. That was awesome then and still worth remembering and celebrating. That spark of defiance has illuminated Rutgers for more than 250 years. And as Rutgers Camden, the tradition of access and inclusion has burned brightly from our inception. 
It moves us to create partnerships and support networks across the state and the nation and across the world. And here at Rutgers Camden, it often connects faculty and students in path-breaking research opportunities. It widens students' horizons and unleashes creative thinking. In fact, Rutgers Camden is a place of uplift, momentum, and imagination. And you, the class of 2018, have embraced these qualities. Many of you have been active participants in our civic engagement work and in our other outreach efforts, and I want to thank you for your service. The world truly needs your skills and creativity more than ever before. We know that you have the ability to both lead and serve, and we have high expectations for you. You have demonstrated this throughout your experiences here on campus, and I know you will go forth and do well. We live in challenging times, and I urge you, as you leave here, to use these skills and talents in your employment as well as in your communities. And I am confident of your success. Why? Because at every level, you excel in creative, original research and thinking, by every measure, many of you have already made enduring impact in your communities. And many of you in the class of 2018 have earned the highest honors for your exemplary scholarly abilities. We are so proud of you. During your time here, you have looked to the faculty as well as to each other for support and for growth. So I want you to keep in touch with us and please know that this university is looking for you to support us as you go forth. We believe in you because you have the grit that leads your, you to give nothing less than your very, very best. You know that learning and growth cannot happen without struggle. And as I always say, the arc of justice, like success, often bends wide. And speaking of justice, I want to challenge you to do work for the common good and promote the political and social equality that best defines this nation. As your careers emerge, you will take new paths, but remember that Rutgers remains here for you. You are among 1,800 Rutgers Camden graduates joining the vast Rutgers network of more than a half a million people. We ask you as you leave here, to embrace the role of engaged alumni, return to mentor our next generation of students, share our good news on your social and professional networks, help us to raise the resources that will enable us to continue our good work and the great Rutgers Camden experience. Now many of you had have your experiences augmented by alumni willing to help the next generation rise up. By giving back like they have, you can make certain that Rutgers Camden remains strong for our students and for our alumni. And many of you have joined Rutgers as freshmen in the same year that I arrived, so I have a special place in my heart for all of you. We've been through a lot together, and our journey together doesn't end today. It only shifts into a new gear, so I look forward to continuing to work with you, the awesome class of 2018, as together we show the world what Scarlet Pride really means. And now, the moment you've been waiting for. As Chancellor of Rutgers University Camden, and by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Governors and the Board of Trustees of this university, it gives me great pleasure to hereby authorize the conferring of the degrees to the candidates recommended by the Faculty of School of Nursing at Camden. Congratulations. Good morning again. This is what you've been waiting for. 
My name is Claudia Beckman, and I'm the Associate Dean for Graduate Programs in Professional Development. And it is my honor to present candidates for the degree Doctor of Nursing Programs. Practice, pardon me. Would you come forward as I call your name? Denise Hare. Stephanie Gerace. <laughs> Julianne Grubb. Devin Lappin. Christy McNally. Rebecca Bryan. <laughs> Shannon Nolan. Denise Proctor. I would like to now invite Dr. Elizabeth Scannell Dash, Associate Dean for Undergraduate Programs, back to the pro podium. Will the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Science in Nursing please rise? Upon recommendation of the faculty of the Rutgers School of Nursing Camden and by virtue of the authority vested in me by Chancellor Haddon and the Board of Governors and Trustees of Rutgers, the State University of New Jersey, I confer upon you the degree Bachelor of Science in Nursing with all the rights, privileges, obligations, and immunities appertaining thereto here and elsewhere. Please be seated. Now I ask my colleague, Dr. Renee Cantwell, to come to the podium to present the candidates for these degrees. 
Each student will receive a pin from Dr. Kevin Emmons, clinical associate, <laughs> clinical associate professor of nursing, okay. Okay. who graduated from Rutgers Camden as a nursing student back in 2004. Will each candidate please come up to the podium as your name is called? Chanel Alexander, cum laude. Go across the front. That way. I can't say it. You need to look at the card. Okay. Alyssa Ambrosano, cum laude. Jana. Ambrosano, cum laude. Laura Applegate. Danica Arma, cum laude. Rachel Armstrong. Carly Aspen, also cum laude. Carly Alt. Karina Ayabaka. Golden Ikit. Navreet Bath. Sarah Buku. Danielle Brancato, cum laude. Laris Brickich. Thomas Buck. Magna cum laude. Samantha Buckner, magna cum laude. Sandra Burnside, cum laude. Aspen Burrell, cum laude. Sean Cahill. Andrew Campbell. Natalia Clark. Katie Klein, magna cum laude. Alexander Colvin, cum laude. Aaron Costello. Noreen Delphine. Natalie DiCarlo. Kimberly D. Ventura. Keisha Martella Dizon. Cum laude. Kelly Donegan, cum laude. 
Taylor Donovan, magna cum laude. Alexandra Diorazio, magna cum laude. Sydney Dougherty. Brianna Dugan, cum laude. Seda Dunlap, cum laude. Karen Ekus, magna cum laude. Carly Acey. Samantha Young. Funabasi Effiong, Kuma Lauda. Samantha Epifani. Christian Iwaskowitz. Kaya Fagan. <laughs> Portia Fagley. <laughs> Jenna Falzone. <laughs> Nye Enye Felder. Lisbeth Fernandez. Kristen Fiorini, cum laude. Thomas Flanagan. Juliana Freeland. Antoinette Garcia. Heather Gasser, cum laude. Sarah Gonzalez. I know you. <laughs> Lizette Green Ruiz. Jerry Gregg, cum laude. Allison Golden, cum laude. Aaron Gullo, summa cum laude. Kathleen Gerba. <laughs> Stephanie Halliday. <laughs> Lonye Halliday, cum laude. <laughs> Amber Harris. Cum laude. Brenda Harrison. Ashley Hawkins. Yoselin Hernandez. Alexis Howell. Leanne Heimer, cum laude. Okay, 
Rebecca Ia Kovani, <laughs> cum laude. Ronnie Johnson. Satanya Jones, summa cum laude. Ramona Karatsas, magna cum laude. Laura Kelly, summa cum laude. Christina Conrad. Christine Cratchwell, cum laude. John Kunkel. Jessica Lacourt. Carly Lafferty. Do you have a card? What's your name? Kelly Libel. Kelly Libel. Kelly Libel. Dana Laneater. Lisa Larson, magna cum laude. Allison Lebach. Renee LeBlanc. Shari Lloyd. Berlin Laura Mella, cum laude. Claire Lucas. Dustin McKenzie, cum laude. Rebecca McGuire, cum laude. Marcella Malison, cum laude. Christina Malander, summa cum laude. Kayla Mateo, magna cum laude. Meredith McBride, summa cum laude. Nicole McCoach, cum laude. Amber McCormick. Carolyn McIntyre, cum laude. Andrea Mendoza. <laughs> Tammy Meneses. <laughs> Caitlin Matheny, cum laude. Jade Miller. Erin Molina, magna cum laude. Shannon Molina. Julie Moore, cum laude. Colleen Morris.
Victoria Mosley. Mariam Mabarik, magna cum laude. Theodora Malou. Amber Nesbitt. Rachel Newland. Han Win, magna cum laude. Jessica Win. Chantilly Win, summa cum laude. Marcel May Nicholas. Summa cum laude. Albert Nkrumah, cum laude. Je Jessica Nuzi, cum laude. Adam O'Brien. Andrea Alexandra O'Connell, cum laude. If I need you, Ogu, cum laude. Sarah Olson. Angna Patel. Kaja Patel. Yasmin Patan. Taylor Perry. Esther Phillips, cum laude. Jasmine Pickering. Brianna Polk, magna cum laude. Kira Popolo, summa cum laude. Kenneth Pryor, cum laude. What is that? Did that? Amanda Radovich. Alvinder Raju. Naomi Ramirez. Cum laude. Yolanda Ramirez. Cum laude. Erica Ramos. Isha Remen. Mishi Resian, cum laude. Christopher Reyes. Darius Rivers. Raquel Robles. Taras Romanchik. Margaret 
Sandy Summa Cum Laude. Emily Sanders, cum laude. Anayali Sandoval Martinez. Taylor Scott. Lily Schantz, cum laude. Cassidy Shoot, magna cum laude. Kaylin Small. Tabitha Summers, cum laude. Amanda Swallow, cum laude. Brooke Travis. Lone Trung, cum laude. Michael Trung. <laughs> Andrew Orbistando, cum laude. Daniel Van Fossen. Andrea Vélez. Elizabeth Vélez. Mark Paolo Verzon. Daniel Wachter, magna cum laude. Samantha Wagner. Jennifer Wayne. Jeremy Williams. Sienna Wong. He Jun Young. Morgan Zane. Caitlin Zizamia, cum laude. Congratulations. It is now my honor and thrill to present the graduates of the Rutgers School of Nursing Camden Class of 2018. Graduates. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, move those tassels. 
You have all graduated. What a wonderful, wonderful celebration. Now I have the pleasure of introducing Dr. Nancy Cressy, clinical, <laughs> clinical assistant professor of nursing who graduated from Rutgers Camden as an RN to BS student in 1998. And Dr. Cressy will give the alumni welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. O'Toole, and congratulations. Good afternoon, class of 2018. I would like at this time for all of the graduates that are getting, that have completed their bachelor's degrees or, or doctorates if they would like, to stand to recite the Nightingale Pledge. I solemnly pledge before God in the presence of this assembly to pass my life in purity and to practice my profession faithfully. I will abstain from whatever is deleterious and mischievous and will not knowingly take or administer any harmful drug. I will do all in my power to maintain and elevate the standard of my profession and will hold in confidence all personal matters committed to my keeping and all family affairs coming to my knowledge in the practice of my calling. With loyalty, I will endeavor to aid the physician and nurse practitioners in their work. And as a missioner of health, I will dedicate myself to devoted service to human welfare. You may be seated. As Dr. O'Toole mentioned, my name is Dr. Nancy Cressy, and I am proud to say that I am also a graduate of Rutgers University Camden, class of 1998. On behalf of the Rutgers University School of Nursing Camden Alumni Association, it is with such pleasure to welcome you to the next phase of your lifelong relationship with Rutgers. I know that many of the parents in the audience here today are proud to be Rutgers graduates yourselves, and it is truly a special thing to watch your own son or daughter join the Rutgers alumni family. Today, all of us are here to celebrate you, the graduates, your accomplishments, your contributions now and in the future, and your actual future. You are now joining a network of more than 500,000 alumni spread out all across the nation and around the world. And I will say that there are alumni groups in Japan and Australia and Spain. It's, it's amazing. The Rutgers University Alumni Association is the embodiment of Jersey Roots global reach. And as we are eager to welcome each of you to be an active member, to stay connected, to volunteer, and to give back to the university in a way that is meaningful to you. We need your brains, your heart, your courage, your ideas, and your passion. We need them in our communities, our hospitals, our medical offices, and classrooms. 
and we need them as part of the Rutgers University Alumni Association. Currently, your fellow nursing alumni have created a School of Nursing Alumni Charter Group, and we want you to be a part of it. For the last several years, you have been a part of an academic community that nurtured and enriched your ideas. And I am so proud to welcome you to an alumni community that will offer you more of the same. Congratulations again, class of 2018, and welcome to the Rutgers University School of Nursing Camden Alumni Association. Thank you, Dr. Cressy, for welcoming our graduates into the Alumni Association and into the profession. On one final note, I suspect that you all realize that the work of planning for commencement begins in January, and it literally takes an army or perhaps the Air Force to pull this off. I want to acknowledge Kristen Walker and her staff in the events office, our elite Nursing Commencement Squad, Jana Nelson, Melanie Palm, Jonathan Smith, Michelle Spallone, and Barbara McAleese, and all of the officers of the Student Nursing Association and the students who volunteered to plan the ceremony with us and made it as wonderful as it was, truly a beautiful send-off. You are extraordinary memory makers. We are all grateful. This is a very, very special day. <laughs>